So just like before, if you're you're curious about this, and it's kind of a lengthy process, but remember that the solution the solutions are based on factors of these two numbers, right? So the factors of one is just one, and then the factors of negative six can be a variety of things. So it could be like negative two over one, it could be two over one, it could be um, three over one, it could be negative three over one, it could be six over one, and it could be negative six over one. How do I figure it out? Well, the starting point is just to graph it. So if I just graph it and look at the graph, then I can kind of figure out it's going to be one of these. It might be, I might have three different things. Um, but I'm going to let you use your graphing calculator because doing it this way just takes too long on the test. So we're just going to say x, um, x cubed. minus x uh, squared oops minus 6x and we just graph it and so it looks like it crosses at negative 2, 0, oh, I forgot about 0 negative 2, 0 and positive 3 we could double check that by hitting trace oh look at that, 0, 0 if I hit negative 2 crosses there and then if I hit 3 crosses there so I already know the answers right it's negative 2 but you can't just write this down you can't say x equals negative 2 x equals 0 and x equals 3 and expect to get full credit it's not happening you gotta do some work so if I do the long division route I'm gonna pick 3 and remember, we're saying x cubed, uh, we have to have a column for each one. x squared, x to the first, and x to the zero. That's one, negative one, negative six, and then zero. Drop down the one, three times one is three. Add those up, this is a positive two. This times this is a positive six. Add those up, this is zero. This times this is zero remainder of 0. Um, this becomes x squared, this becomes x, and this becomes plus 0. So I have x squared plus 2x. So now I'm going to do the same thing with negative 2. I'm going to say negative 2, right? Well, let me draw it down a little lower. So I have negative 2 and then my coefficient, remember I have to have an x squared, I have to have x to the first, and I have to have x to the zero. So the coefficient is one, so I put one, two, and zero. Drop down the one. One times negative two is negative two. Add those up, I get zero. Zero times negative two is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. I have a remainder of zero, all right? So this becomes 1x plus 0. So those are the two solutions. So remember that if these are the solutions, then my factors are x plus, I'm sorry, you got to do the opposite. It's x minus 3 times x plus 2. And then way down here at the bottom, I'm left with just x. So I would say x equals zero. So this last x, this one right here, I could just say x equals zero. And that's your third solution. Okay. I'll zoom out so you guys can take a look at it. Well, actually, don't put your stuff away. Let me just show you something real quick. Um, I forgot that we're not doing the factoring, but if I do the same problem of factoring and I say x, um, if, I, if I notice all three of these terms have an x in them and I factor out the x, I end up with x squared minus 1x minus 6. Over to the side, if I do the math on that, 
and I say this is x squared and this is negative 6, then I get x times x. It has to add up to negative 1. In other words, this would be 2x and this would be negative 3x. So then this becomes x times x minus 3 times x plus 2. So sometimes the factoring is easier on these short polynomials. Alright, that's it.